I am an intern with the Social Impact team here at the Kennedy Center, and we want to welcome you to the Skylight Pavilion for this evening's Millennium Stage presentation brought to you by Centene Charitable Foundation with major support provided by Target and Marriott Foundation. As a courtesy to this evening's artists and other artists, audience members, we ask that you please silence your mobile devices at this time. We do, however, encourage you to post, 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 take pictures, no flash photography, please. Um, also use the hashtag GoGo101, hashtag Millennium Stage, and hashtag Kennedy Center. Every day, the Millennium Stage celebrates the human spirit by presenting a free performance at 6 p.m. 365 days a year, all of our performances are broadcast live and available for viewing on kennedycenter-center.org, as well as our Facebook page and YouTube channel to make the arts as accessible as possible. Tonight's performance, tonight's panel, is a part of a special brand new series called Go Go 101 to take place mostly on Fridays, last Friday of the month, and it's gonna go from now until September. And this is in partnership with Girl La. Can everybody say Girl La? Girl La. All right. <laughs> Go Go is the official music of DC, as many of you know. And like many structural and communities across the country, it's under threat due to gentrification. We at the Kennedy Center are proud to partner with Girl La to educate and elevate this important art form at the nation's performing arts center. Now, please join me in making a very warm welcome for Dominique Wells and Kelsey Glass from Gorilla. Put your hands together. Two, can you hear me? I need you to make a little bit of noise. Hello, good evening. My name is Damo. Um, I started Gorilla. This is my right hand, Kelsey Glass. Give her, give her a little. Okay. We are so thankful and blessed to be here tonight with all of you to kick off the GoGo -Go 101 series with the Kennedy Center. Um, this is their first set of robust programming that looks like this. It'll take place once a month. Me personally, I am a DMV native, born and raised in Prince George's County. Yes, um, my dad is from Uptown. I spent a lot of time between both. I spent a lot of time in Go-Go's all through seventh grade, through high school, through my early 20s. It's a big part of me and what it means to be a Washingtonian is massive. So it means a lot to us to be able to bring and usher in the culture into this space in this way. So once again, like thank you all for being here. It means a lot. So give yourselves a big round of applause, please. <laughs> The intention of this series is to both pre present performance but also education. Um, what we've seen in the last year as far as protecting go-go music and culture in this city has, has a, it's been a massive amount of robust program. You've seen much more go-go music in places, um, but not necessarily as much education. So we want to fuse the bo we want to fuse both, um, where we're giving you some threads of what it means to us, why it's important, the history, where it comes from, where it started, and where we're ultimately trying to go. As um, we had some interruptions in maybe how our gener our current generation is engaging it. Uh, so it's important that we tell those stories. It's important that we show you you know these images that you see flashing behind us that start from the 80s, the 60s, and, and, you know, and beyond. Um, and it's important that you know, we have you guys here with us who either don't know or, or do know um, so that you can share this with others and keep on engaging with us. Do you have anything you want to say, Kelsey? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you said it perfectly. I definitely want to give you guys a heads up on some of the programming we have moving forward. So in February, the programming is going to be about where it all began, and it will feature a performance by Rare Essence. Um, in March, we're going to feature front women for Women's History Month and all things Gorilla, so definitely come through for that one. Um, in April, it's going to be the next generation, so we're going to center a really young band that's going to perform. We're going to have kids and schools in the room and just really talking about the future of GoGo -Go and who are going to be the leaders of that. Um, in May, we have policy and legislation, so we're going to, going to get into the nitty-gritty of what it looks like to protect GoGo -Go in this city, to protect DC culture, and to protect people of color. And how it's important to, to protect people of color because that's largely why the culture slips. Um, you've seen how gentrification has impacted Washington, D.C., and it has a lot to do with how the culture has changed and why we've had these challenges against go-go music to start. Um, so that's going to be a massive part of the conversation with the policy and legislation date that is happening in May. <laughs> 
Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for manning the traffic and coming right after work. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Joe Claire from WPGC 95.5. Um, and just as a quick, a quick antidote, I met Joe last year when he had us on air for Women's History Month to talk about some of our programming, and his energy is exactly what you expect. One of those people that you meet and you kind of have expectations, and then he meets them. Um, he's all about DC culture, all about black home ownership, all things that are progressive and important to each of us. So thank you, Joe, for participating. No problem. Let's give it up for these young ladies. Come on. Give it up for Gurla. 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 Everybody in here say, girl love. girl love. That's right. Y'all just learned some DC slang. If you're not from here and, and you meet somebody, all you have to girl love, and they'll tell you wherever you're trying to get to, where, if you're lost or whatever. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I will be your moderator tonight. Like she said, I'm Joe Claire from WPGC 95.5. You can listen to me each and every morning. Uh, specifically, listen to me at 6 o'clock because we have something called the Go-Go Mix at 6. So 6 in the morning, since we are DC, 6 in the morning. You heard what I said. 6 a.m., we are playing Go-Go music. First thing in the morning. Because this is our music from our city, it represents our culture, it represents a culture that I've grown up with. To, to be at the age that I am now, y'all see these gray hairs, it is it's important for me to do as much as I can to preserve go-go, go-go culture and DC culture. So, um, with that said, I would like to welcome you all out. Um, it's incredible to be in this space. I am a kid who grew up in the Kennedy Center. Uh, when I was uh, very, very young, my, my aunt played for the National Symphony Orchestra. She was a violinist, so I had to spend Saturdays and Sundays in here bored out of my mind. <laughs> I'd have to come and listen to the symphony. Then come see like the three tenors and the this and the that and the Alice in Wonderland and Cinderella and everything else they had in here. And I hated it, but then over time, yeah, I hated it, but then, <laughs> Over time, uh, the kid, I grew to love the Kennedy Center. Uh, our family it, uh, included Kennedy Center as the brunch place for a while. Anybody Kennedy Center brunch? Yeah, see, y'all didn't know. See, see, y'all not paying attention. DC got it popping. You come in and have brunch, impress the ladies. I brought many women to, <laughs> to Kennedy Center brunch. You got brunch at the Kennedy Center? I'm used to IHOP. Like, nah, <laughs> this is something else. This has salmon, not, not, not. <laughs> Not salmon, salmon. Everybody know the difference? In Prince George's County, it's salmon. <laughs> you can laugh, don't be mad. Over here is salmon. Anyway, so I'm a kid who grew up here, and so it's quite an honor to be asked to help introduce GoGo -Go 101 and bring this to you guys with uh, all that I know about GoGo. -Go. Um, while I was going to the Kennedy Center with my aunt on Saturday afternoon, I was going to the GoGo -Go on Saturday night. I was going to the GoGo -Go as fast as I could. And I was a guy who grew up in Prince George's County, so there was a difference between DC GoGo's and Maryland GoGo's, or as we say, Merlin. <laughs> Go -Go. Can everybody say Merlin? That's right. That's what it's called when you come to PG County. It's Merlin. And we had Merlin Go-Go's, and it was, it was a difference. But I took the culture with me. So while hip-hop, everybody's familiar with hip-hop and hip-hop's explosion, hip-hop for us was a secondary music. Hip-hop for me and all of my friends was secondary to Go-Go. Go-Go was way bigger. Run DMC. Everybody knows Run DMC? Yeah. yeah everybody knows Run DMC? I saw Run DMC at the Capitol Center have to get almost booed off the stage because they had to go behind Rare Essence. That explains to you how big of an impact this music has on us and our culture. So without further ado, I want to introduce, I had to get that little bit out, I want to introduce our panelists for tonight. Coming up first, he is known as Big G. He is the lead talker for Washington, D.C.'s Go-Go Band Backyard. He is an entertainer and actor with his latest role as Leon on HBO's The Deuce. Y'all give it up for my man, Ann Juan Glover from Backyard Band. Yes, sir. Next up, we have uh, 
She has been immersed in performing in arts since childhood. For more than a decade, she's built a large and consistent following in the Washington, D.C. area and abroad, performing with some of D.C. Metropolitan's most talented artists and musicians. Give it up for Michelle Blackwell from the What Band. Oh, yeah. Coming from Northwest D.C., this guy is the lead singer and co-founder of the legendary go-go band UCB, the uncalled for band established in 1996. Y'all give it up for my man Trey. Trey. This is Trey, a UCB. Very important figure. And last but not least, the man was on the turntables. He was the one and twos. He's regarded as, D regarded as one of DC's best DJs. He's a turntablist, but he also has tons of DC culture. Come on, give it up for DJ Alize. Make some noise for him. Make some noise for him. Make some noise for him. Give it up for my panel. So let's get right into it. Uh, you all have microphones. Uh, I need to hear from each of you, and we'll start with the lady. We'll let Michelle start. When was the first time you heard go-go music? And can you remember the moment that you fell in love with go-go music? Um, yes, uh, first I just want to thank you um, for doing this and also thank uh, Damo and, and everyone who was involved in having us here. I have like a lot of memories here at the Kennedy Center. Um, as a young girl, as a performing artist, um, I was here doing my ballet concerts and all, all that good stuff. And I mean, it's like a 360 degree moment because it's, um, I'm here for, um, you know, I'm here because of Go-Go, which is something that I love so much. So it's, it's a surreal moment, right. but I'm, I'm really grateful and I'm honored to be here. So um, my first uh, memory of Go-Go, um, I spoke on it at the uh, council um, hearing. Um, it's vague um, because I was so young. It was a block party in my neighborhood. Um, I remember you know, like the sounds. I remember the, the vibe, the energy. I remember the rhythm and the beat. I don't necessarily remember like details, but I just remember dancing, laughing, having a good time. I don't remember exactly which band. It might have been like a reality band, one of the neighborhood Ooh. bands. Because I grew up in Northwest, and that was one of the bands that I used to perform in my neighborhood, or where they were from, rather. Um, so that was my first a block party. And that's how you fell in love with it. Absolutely. G, when was the, can you remember your first time hearing go-go music? Really, party my brother, my sister, because my brother had all the PA tapes, my older brother. And he had like- You don't have to explain what PA tapes are. PA tapes, cassette tape, like, yeah, like Red, Reds and the Boys, Air Raid, you know what I mean, Pump Blenders. This like, he had all, every go-go band like all the old school bands. And then right there, we used to live right on 14th of Columbia Road, Irving. They used to have the bands right, which is like the subway station and Chipotle and all that right now. It used to be a basketball court across from Best Buy, which we used to be Woolworth and Loafer. Mm -hmm. And the bike on the corner, then you had the waffle shop right on 14th Street, <laughs> right on Park on Irving. So they used to play the bands right there. We used to ride our bike right there and listen to the bands play on Saturday. And that's when I first heard like, just the bands and then like fell in love with Junkyard. I used to ride and watch them at 19 p.m. And I just, that was it for me. Junkyard was what, what made you fall in love. Yeah, Junkyard. Playing on 19th and M. 19th and M by Golden Dome, right on yes. 14th Street. By, for, they used to play like in front of the, front of the arcade. In front of the arcade. Yeah. Anybody who remembers DC history, 19th and M. <laughs> Crazy. Alize. Uh, so for me, I'm born in New York. So I came down like 84, 85. I was five years old, but I, my first recollection would be like my dad used to play like uh, Stinky Ding. He, so he used to play like hip hop stuff that was infused. I gotcha. used to always kind of be like, what, what's that? And then, you know, it's like late 80s and then mm -hmm. early 90s. Um, I got into, I was always kind of into the hip hop first. So the go-go was secondary to me. So once I started going to go-go's and being kind of like <laughs> push, you know, that's what opened, you know. For me, like seeing Big G being 12, 13, 14 years old, like seeing G, Junk, Groovers, like it just opened, it opened me up. Gotcha. Trey? So my first time remembering that I heard Gogo, -Go, I had to be like maybe Chuck Brown, my cousins used to play. But when I fell in love with Gogo, -Go was I'll never forget, 1988. My cousins had the, 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 the VHS. 
if you're too young and hear the VHS was for VCRs, it was like a like the DVD before the DVD, but it was a VHS and it was Gogo Live at the Capitol Center, and I I know it from front to back, I, from when DC Scorpio came on and then it went to uh, uh, EU and then Rare Essence and I used to just rewind Darnell Floyd and White Boys uh, rap verses all the time because mm. strangely enough. I, I fell in love with hip hop and go-go at the same time. Okay. So, you know, I had my LL Cool J and my NWA tapes and my Capital, Live at the Capitol Center and some of the other PA tapes. So that was when I fell in love with it. It was Red Essence with the costumes and, you know, and, and EU with the horns right. and the dance moves and stuff. So we keep referencing PA tapes. A PA tape is a tape that you'd have to get from the guy who ran sound that night. You could take your, your recorder to the go-go and just put it up against the speaker, record it so you would have something to listen to, but it sounds horrible in your car. <laughs> so the, the, you have to go to the guy who runs sound, and he would make tapes. He would sit there and run off a bunch of tapes. And they weren't the best, <laughs> right? It was <laughs> great the back best, then, though. Great back then. they sounded better. And um, the PA tape, if your name, if you got a shout out on the PA tape, you were kind of like blown up in your neighborhood. I'm here with my brother and he was a PA tape keeper and he would never let me hold on to the tape because my box used to eat up tapes. And so, so we're gonna reference those throughout the evening. Um, Go-Go is much more than a type of music. It's a huge piece of the foundation that created DC culture. From where uh, we go to party and bond to an art form that has created our identities, identities as Washingtonians. Can, can each of you speak on its bigger impact in your lives and then in your, who you are today? Okay, uh, well, as a child, again, um, many of my, um, most of my weekends uh, growing up were at Go-Go's, um, <laughs> at the Black Hole, Ooh. in particular because I grew up in, in Northwest and Northwest, I mean, and the black hole wasn't, you know, uh, too, too much of a leap from the house. And I had a, one of those girlfriends with the cool mom. Well, I used to go spend a night over there, and the cool mom would take us back and forth to the black hole. I you mean, mean somebody's mother took you to oh, a yeah. place called the black hole? Yes. <laughs> and dropped you off? Yes. Yeah, so her her wow. mom was the cool mom. That's what I'm saying. She was the cool mom. And so, um, I mean, it was just, it was so much a part of the fabric of, of our lives that we, took it for granted. I mean, it was just who we were, it was what we knew, and it wasn't until we went to other places that we realized just how unique uh, we were. Um, my mom actually moved here from California. She's, she's from Santa Barbara. Okay. And so when I went to go visit my family, and I would bring, of course, my PA tapes, um, to, and they, they would listen, and they would just be fascinated just, just by my stories when they came to um, visit us. My aunt in particular, um, she's, a, she's a jazz singer, and she was listening to a Chuck Brown. Actually, no, she was listening to, she was playing me some of her music, Moody's Mood and mm -hmm. songs like that. And when I was singing along, she was like, girl, what do you know about Moody's Mood? And because Chuck Brown, you know, um, you know he, again, it was something that we took, it, uh, took for granted. Go-Go, uh, you know, again, the way we talked, the way we dressed, um, the way we carried ourselves was extremely unique, and Go-Go was the reason why. Anybody else? Uh, I, I would say Gogo saved my life. Why? I mean, um, I was I grew up. I was born in the early '80s, but I grew up when DC was, you know, when it was the murder capital and that. And in the '90s, you know, I was a teenager in the '90s. So, where I'm from uptown, that that location, that area was like a high concentration you know, drug trafficking, murder and everything. So if you didn't have an outlet, you were gonna get caught up in a lot of, you know, things you might not sh should have got caught up in. So I think that having music and finding a passion early, I always say that if your child could find their passion early, that's like heaven on earth for a parent. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that you would focus on, that's a way that you could have um, a, an escape from that environment, so I had that. I was fortunate enough to have that, but I also had a manager that made me, he came into our lives that made me focus on it, because he used to always say, you can't have one foot in this and one foot in that, you gotta make a choice, you know what I mean? So it saved my life in, in, in that sense, because I had over 50 friends get murdered before I was 18. So, you know, just to give that perspective on 
how important it is. It saved your life. Exactly. So, but then also, uh, for what I do to, today, like touring the world with Wale and, and working with all these other artists like your J. Coles and your Big Sean's and all of them, and working with Pharrell and all these other big names, it's prepared me for the live performance in the hip hop arena. And it also <laughs> gives me an advantage as far as um, something, it's a genre that hasn't really reached the world yet. So it gives me an advantage with uh, some of the rhythmic syncopations and stuff when we're working in the studio. So like when, with the Go-Go, we do two and three hour shows four or five nights a week. The hip hop world, it's only 45 minutes set. That's easy. It's like karaoke for me. So it's like <laughs> the Go-Go trained me for that. So that's how important it is to, you know, to my life. Oh, I'm sorry. This this young lady up front wanted me to explain who Chuck Brown is. Chuck Brown is considered the godfather of Go-Go. Chuck Brown <laughs> Chuck Brown is considered the the epitome, the gold standard. He is what it is. Well, he was what it was. Rest in peace to Chuck Brown. He is very revered in Go-Go circles. He's very revered in the city and uh, he took jazz music and transformed it into what we call uh, Smooth Chuck Go-Go. So just thank you. Thank you for that, young lady. But you don't have a mic. Don't just keep yelling out at me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We will do questions and answers, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Well, me far is just like saying where how I came up and um, just a part of me of who I am in Washington, D.C. and with go-go music. Um, like Trey said, for go-go saved my life. You know what I mean? So everybody probably heard about the stories that I've been through from um, watching how I grew up or what you saw in the newspaper or TMZ or whatever, or even before TMZ. Um, Joe, some people you, know I tell them. Well, I'm saying I don't really want to go all the way down No problem. <laughs> But I'm saying people know, you know what I mean? Well, for some people that really don't know, I've been shot 13 times. You know what I mean? I was shot at 12 years old. I was um, raised uptown by a single mom, you know what I mean? In a household with all my siblings being gone right now. I'm my I'm mom's only kid living. Mm. Joe, you know me from running on the plane and flying to LA trying to start my acting career. Yes, indeed. As a kid, Joe, Joe Claire and Red Grant was one of the guys, or two of the guys that really kept it real. And like, I always call those guys and they always give me advice and like, look, LA is not what you think, what you see on TV. So LA is like very expensive, very. So you know, like the hotels and things, I used to like sleep like wherever I could. And I never wanted to really leave my city because of my music when I <laughs> fell in love with Gogo and the backyard band I started. Um, I always said that I'd never leave my city. I felt that I can always commute, go get the work done and come home. And um, the manager I had back in the, um, back in the day, Turner Scooper, he always used to tell me, you is better, you is better than your next show. So what are you gonna do next? You know what I mean? And my mom, my grandma, I used to always sit in front of the TV and they used to always like, move up, move that boy, ain't gonna be able to see it. And my grandma would say, let that boy stay in front of the TV. One day he might be inside the TV. How about that? How about so that? So I just kept pushing, man. And um, Hollywood is hard, but I had, you know, my, my bumps in it and um, I'm, I'm still working. You know what I mean? And, but as a matter of fact, uh, you have a show tonight, correct? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there is a. And, and two uh, tomorrow. And, at where? To tomorrow, then I fly to Africa Sunday. Yeah. So, so he's a working work, actor. Work, he has, he's on the Deuce. He was on the Deuce on HBO. Uh, you were in uh, 12 Years a Slave. He was in that movie. And he still comes home, does go-go's every weekend. And the Wire. And the Wire. Oh, let's not forget the Wire. I'm sorry. How can every we night. forget the Wire? Every night. But it's, it's, it's a blessing to be able to do it. But go-go is my first love. I wouldn't do it. For, like, I left. Like, I lost, like, four agents because they said I needed to move to L.A. for Whatever. my career. So I just stay home, 
and I audition, I put stuff on tape, and I go to New York like four, four times out of the week, and I come right back on Amtrak. I get off at New Carrollton. Sometime I get off at Union Station because my shows are closer. Right. And I take an Uber or a teddy bear pick me up, and we keep it moving on Wingsy, and we go. And that's it. So if you if you need to see a real go go, you can be at the Aqua tonight. And every yes. Friday. And every Friday. every Friday. And 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 boy, is it a go go! I my, <laughs> I have to sneak. My wife doesn't let me go. She doesn't know I'm going to the Aqua. I tell her I'm out doing stuff with the homeless kids. <laughs> but I'm at the go-go <laughs> yes so as she mentioned Chuck Brown was uh, uh, he, he took funk R&B and soul and, and then added what we're going to call go-go syncopation which is at the heart of what we do and, and go-go beat uh, beat and syncopation I'm going to make those two different things and um, transformed music that we would hear into something else. So you would take a popular song and make it cool. Because DC, I don't know if you guys know, DC, we're not really impressed by anybody else. We don't care about your hip hop and your gold chain. That doesn't mean anything to us. What you gonna do on this dance floor? And at the end of the night, what's your hands like? <laughs> Can you fight? Not anymore. Right, but not anymore. No. But back in the days, listen, I'm a, if, can I be honest? Yes. In the 70s and 80s, that's what it it's was true. about. Yeah. So, so the, the music grew out of that. And so you had Chuck Brown with the jazz influence, but then you had, um, like, can somebody talk about EU and Sugar Bear? And, and, and their, uh, uh, what they meant? Uh, when I was in, I went to Morgan State. When I was there, I did a... Um, Say that again. What school? Morgan State University. The, the greatest institution of <laughs> higher learning so when I on was, the planet. So when, <laughs> when I was there... When I was there, I did a big, a big project to try to uh, if, um, change the hearts and minds of people that weren't from this mid-Atlantic region that, that didn't understand Go-Go. They had a, 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 a real jaded view of it. So I did a project, and I started with Chuck, told him how, you know, how he came up with that. He used to play those pockets in between songs so he wouldn't have to stop in between songs. So, like, you know how a DJ can go from one record to another one with the turntables or the records. In live music, Chuck didn't want to stop in between songs, so he would keep like the percussion part going. That is what turned into what you hear now. And you had your EUs come in, and your Rare Essence, and they had their, their, uh, their era. Then you had your junkyards and backyards come in, and they all added something different to the game. They all contributed a different sound. And Groovers. So, so and Groovers, yeah. to, to, to expound on that, uh, Sugar Bear told me one day that EU stands for Experience Unlimited. He said he was a big Jimi Hendrix fan. And so it was the Jimi Hendrix experience. Here's a kid in Southeast who knew how to play guitar and play bass. So he was into that. But then once he heard the syncopation with it, he was like, hold on, this is something else. So this experience is unlimited. It keeps going on. You come hear me play, you can hear me play for three hours. You can hear me, you know, and it's going to keep going. It doesn't stop. Then you had Rare Essence that was coming out of, you know, some of those uh, Rare Earth and those other soul groups that you can go. They, you know, they sell them on, on TV at 3 o'clock in the morning. Time, time, <laughs> time music presents 70 soul classics. Rare Earth. And, and those people where Rare Essence took that added the syncopation to it. So they would do popular songs, but they would take it and turn it into a go-go thing. And they would be, they came out of prom culture. Uh, Sugar Bear broke it down to me because each spring you need bands at the prom. And every school wanted the coolest band at their prom. I didn't know that. Well, now you know. Nah. Well, you're from True. New York, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> so nah, but, I mean, yeah, nah, but for me growing up, I. As a DJ, it's hard to explain growing up as a DJ in DC in the right. 90s because I literally had to play against the bands. And I don't think people know how hard that is. Well, you know, explain it. Well, a band takes all the energy. Like, if a band comes here and plays, everybody's gone. Yeah. I had to come after that. <laughs> so, people don't really understand. I used, to, I used to try to come with the hip hop, but I started realizing I got to come with go go. So that's what started opening me up to, you know, 
But just like just like hip hop and go go, at once upon a time, hip hop had that go go swing in it. Yes, it did. Salt Pepper, Kid, Kid Clay. Clay, all of them. They had that go go swing with the junk. Yeah, it was sample. in there. You know what I mean? So it's it, you know if you're from New York or wherever you're from, which once you come to, to you DC and you it. spend a little time here, you're going you're going to be forced to love it. Well, can somebody can somebody speak about the bounce beat? craze that's going on now, the new I, school. I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, to uh, ask, I'll kind of try to segue to that. So I know for me, Rare Essence was always like my favorite band because they had original material. And I knew that, you know, from after seeing Junkyard having a major label deal with Def Jam and Trouble Funk having a record deal, I forgot who it was with, and I saw, saw Rare Essence on Jukebox. It used to be this TV show that you could order videos on called the jukebox. So when I saw Red Essence on there, I'm like, yo, this is for real. And I think that after their, after their era, with your groovers and your junkyards and your backyards, it took a shift and they, they were a little more in your face and aggressive. You know what I mean? They all had like uh, different sounds. Like, like groovers had heavy Congo sounds and you know, they were, they would uh, be real exciting, but then you would had when Backyard came, they had the heavy timbali, thunderous rhythms with them. That was something new. So a lot of the young bands kind of started to forget their identity, and everybody wanted to be like Backyard. It was like everybody an off. It was like an off beat. Their beat yeah, was kind of off. Yeah, exactly. It was so a they, bounce they, yet. they had yeah they had a, like a like a different style, and the younger <clears> bands started to only mimic them. That's when. The band that we started with UCB came in, we was like, okay, so if the Timbales is a is a thing that we're that, that's the new thing, we're gonna do it. But I remember I was like 15 in the basement, and I told Eric, our drummer is right sitting right over there, and I told Eric, I said, if we're gonna play Timbales, we're gonna have to have our own beats, our own distinctive beats. They can't be nothing of nobody else's. No other band played, and it's gonna have to have our own lyrics that people can sing along to. So if you know any of the UCB material, most of the stuff that you know of UCB is our own music. It's not nobody else's songs. Like, and that's what we were, we were proud of. We felt like we had to, add, had to add that and contribute that to the game. And we, thought, we also felt we had to take it further than it had been taken before. It was always in our mind that, not a knock to anybody else, but I always felt like, the next generations are supposed to go further than the ones that came before you. Right. So for us, it w we wouldn't have been successful if we was in our 30s and we still was only playing in your club use and stuff because they already do that and they've already done that. So we had to take it a step further. Then TCB came. Now, I'm gonna say TCB kinda, they can get the credit for the bounce beat, but I think Buggy kinda indirectly made it up, but TCB, that was their niche, that was their thing, and they ran with it, and now all of the younger guys are following TCBs, they're like derivatives of the TCB. Got it. Indeed. Absolutely. It's like, sl like far so, slowing down. So what she said is... The culture. Go-Go, for everybody who can't like hear... Like how hip-hop... Go go has sort of mimicked the go go trends, kind of mimic trends in hip hop. I, I think it's I think it's I think it's a bigger issue. Uh -oh. I think it's bigger than go. than music because of what was going on in our communities socially mm -hmm. in the '80s. The messaging was different in music in R and B in hip hop and in go go, whereas in the '90s. Um, and of course, remember what was going on with the drug culture, with the crack epidemic, and so forth and so on. Um, everything in the 80s was super materialistic. Um, people were, you know, kind of just getting into what they loved about the benefits they were reaping from getting all this money, um, even though people were dying. And in the 90s, we started to see the consequences of those things when it came to the murders, even though it's happening in the 80s too. And the tone of rap changed because of what was going on in the community, whether it was police brutality or misogyny, misogyny and um, the way that men and women kind of like clashed and 
You heard like certain lyrics and song, Gangsta Rap was born. At that same time, Go-Go's Go Go started to get a little hardcore too. So I, I, think, I think music is just a reflection, especially in, in urban communities, of just how we are living in, in general. So, I and, and, and I say the same thing with Bounce Beat as well, because although, I mean, outside of the origins, rhythmically, where these different subgenres of Go Go's came from, as far as like crank, grown and sexy, bounce, I think it's Bounce Beat is also a reflection of how people view trap music and what they call mumble rap. Mm -hmm. A lot of old school hip hop artists um, in the culture kind of look down on them in a sense and they feel like they don't get it, they don't understand. And at the same time, a lot of, a lot of old school go-go artists or people in the culture and fans also gave Bounce Beat kind of that same stigma. And I think that is because Bounce Beat um, and the people who were involved in Bounce Beat and the people who embraced Bounce Beat who were younger, are living and telling different stories that right. other people can't relate to. So um, I just think this different subgenres within GoGo are reflect are, are reflections not necessarily on other 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 uh, music other genres of music, but more so our like similar collective experience that we're going through in urban cities all across the, the country. Well put, Michelle. Love it. I think she answered it, Damo. Yeah, it's so uh, <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. This your thing. I keep chiming in, I can't help it. But on that <laughs> note, um, I feel like, cause Michelle, you really wrapped that up with a nice bow, but that transitions us into the next generation and how we sustain ourselves going forward. And that's the challenge that we're facing at this point because we think that with our last generation of Go-Go that was largely bounce beat and got that negative connotation associated to it because some of the things that went on that were totally separate and should not have been coupled with the music, mm -hmm. but it was. And since it was pushed out of the city largely. So we have a whole generation of kids Kids that did not experience go go the same way that we did Listen, mm -hmm. and and with that they didn't learn it the same way they didn't experience it the same way when I was a kid every school had a set of bands mm -hmm. every school had a set of bands and they would open but up it's for the same the, way for, they it's would open up for the big bands and it's kind of what would set the next generation and how like how you would create a big band because this generation would have so many hundreds of bands that were contributing to what the culture was but we but we kind of lost that when it got pushed well I'm a, I want to jump in a minute I want to I want to I want to say when so with go go and hip hop you got to bring on Wale. And when me, and when me and him met at PG Plaza, we never would have thought that that hip hop would have kind of took Go-Go off. It kind of took people out of Go-Go. People kind of was like, oh, like, <coughs> you could be a rapper now? Like, wow, it's way more, you know. So to what you're saying, it's like that, you know, that fork in the road was, you know, 2003, 2004, when Man Wale linked I, I up. I was just about to say the same thing. Um, when, 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 when I got that call from Kenny Burns to help Wale and to to break him into the, biz, the 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 rap game, working with Zay and Kenny with Wale, we kind of had a formula to how we wanted to um, introduce. It was. It, the way that they coined him, the way, they, the way that they shopped him to the world was this kid coming from the DMV, and he had a new sound he was bringing with him. So what we did with UCB with Wale is we merged, we tried to merge the hip-hop and the go-go together to be able to package it in a three-minute, four-minute song commercially, the same way that we did with Sexy Lady. Mm -hmm. Because the record is what's going to take you places. The live show is going to blow you away, but you have to make people want to come to your live show in other markets outside the DMV area. So I think that, like he said, once Wale broke and he got big, the floodgates opened. Pe the doors opened, but the, the, the younger generations, it was cool to be a rapper now. Facts. It wasn't, it, they didn't, they, a lot of them weren't trying to play instruments like before. Like it was everything to be in the band. It, it, now it's if, everything to be a rapper. But, but if I may, it, it, and I think we can, everybody here can can kind of recognize this is the same thing that happens in every genre of music. Right, happen right. with jazz, happen with the blues, hip -hop. happen with rock, happen with hip hop. But I, and so these are the growing pains that a, a right. musical style is going to have to go through. It seems like to me. But I think we would be remiss if we didn't. Rem if, if just like Domro brought up, we have we cannot um, forget about 
the role, okay, I, I, I totally agree that Wale was the first real example of like a hip hop artist and something that people in this area could aspire to because prior to that, we didn't really have a, a hip hop artist that a lot of people could look up to that really blew up. But the reason, as I see it, as an artist who experienced it firsthand, like I know that G did, um, that a lot of young people today are not picking up instruments they, the way they used to is not just because of um, what they saw was another option, was because they were systematically kept out of GoGo for 10 years because of the PG County, um, because of bills like the Prince George's County Dance Hall license that restricted 90% of bands and closed down almost every club that we were allowed to play in. I know because I was marching with... In I'm DC sorry. too, though. and in DC, every time and something happened, school, they used that as an excuse to shut down our clubs. And what happened was, after the dance hall license pretty much wiped out every opportunity for bounce beat bands to play, and they did allow certain bands like EU, like Backyard, like Rare Essence. Even though Backyard, we all had our problems getting back into these clubs. Yeah, they ain't even let us play, sister. Yeah, you're right. But Bounce Beat had it much, much worse. They, it was so bad for Bounce Beat that they literally, for the past almost 10 years, did not have any place to play. And that's and a fact. When, and when that's we were fact. growing up, we were able to go to a go-go when we were 13, 14, 15, 16. A around 2008, 9, we that was all put, put to rest. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until... Absolutely. So... If you cut an entire generation, it happened for 10 years. So you look up 10 years later, you wonder why young people are not involved. No, it's not because they want to all be rappers now. It's because they did not experience go-go the way we did because they were not allowed to be a part of the culture because city administrators cut them out. That's why. With that said, oh, go ahead, took, G. And they, took it out, and they took it out of the schools yeah, as well. Music Absolutely. Cool. Sure you know what I mean? School. So it's like, any, any, go ahead. Any, any, like... Earlier when you guys were talking about, like when Trey was talking about like the songs and how they write the songs and how when they came on, they had their, their own style of original music. Like when Michelle was talking about, like I, I started with like when Flex gave me a job on PGC, Real Radio. So after I was on PGC for some years, got myself up there, knowing the music and how the music come in and the music directors, nobody is in position of power that's from my city, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. Any in anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to know, like, so with my rapper Los, we, Los make many songs, write songs. Like, we was raised up under Chucky Thompson, which did all the music for Murray J. Blige, Biggie, Biggie. Biggie Small. We have songs for days. Mm -hmm. But me knowing radio, and I went on to work on KYS, we had, E, e my man, E over there. No, we had a million songs. Mm -hmm. They would never play our original music. Nope. So to that point, what Trey was talking about, we, we have implemented hip-hop songs in it, and we took the songs that people didn't even know about that hip-hop artists were doing, and they thought they were our songs, but they were N.W.A., Biggie. They was different people's songs, right. and we made those songs popular. Right. So I'm like, okay, they're never going to play our music, and I still go to my music director and say, hey, they go a song right here. Eat right. fish on Friday, Saturday love. We miss the Ibex. No more homicide. You know, all of those are original songs they would never play. So we say, okay, so we're going to play something and mix it in a little bit. Put a little bit of ours in there. Sprinkle a little bit of theirs in it. Cook it and put it out on the street. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's stay in that line of thinking. What happens now? We're here at the Kennedy Center doing Go Go 101. We are talking about uh, a, uh, a music and a culture that mirrors anything else that America has put out and shipped out all over the globe. Uh, we're just like jazz, just like blues, just like rock, just like anything else. What happens now? I think, I think what needs to happen now is we need to get back to what was going on in the 80s when Trouble Funk and Chuck were making records. I think that the, like the bands that are still sustained here and still working four and five nights a week that everybody knows and loves and some of the younger groups, I think it's up to us to create records. We need to make records because now that the world is shrinking with social media, the, the, the outside world, they don't understand. They understand hearing a record first and then going and seeing a show. We are, are going to dominate live shows all the time, any go-go band. So just think about, just hear me out. Go-Go bands play songs their way better than the original song. What if that was Indeed. their song too? Already, it was one way, but then 
they changed it up. Like when you go see a mint condition, they might play the song different than it is on the record. They might play it different live because that's the live show. That's the live experience. It could be the same way with bands. I, I think we need to, this is the record business. You know what I mean? So I think we need to make more records. And that, that's the way we can penetrate more markets. Michelle, you I agree. agree? No, I mean, I agree. I agree on that. I agree with what he's saying, but I, d I just want to make sure, again, as, a, as somebody who's been in the trenches now for 20 years, consistently performing and performing with other bands and aware of, of what they've been, um, you know, been doing musically, um, we, I, I, I have to make sure that I, I make it clear that, yes, go-go music is a, is, is, a, is a genre that relies heavily on cover tunes and cover music, but we're also a genre that does put out and creates original music. What G said is true. I have a song that, you know, is the first song that's been on rotation in, in radio since UCB Sexy Ladies in the mid-2000s. And why is that? Because I was, luckily, I was lucky enough to have somebody... Um, Tom Goldfogel, who um, was managing Chuck Brown and um, also manages Chuck Brown's tribute band to mentor and help me throughout my CD production process. And when I chose the single, helped to guide me through that process. Well, DC does not have an industry behind it like Arista and B, you know, and, uh, and Sony and all that, all that kind of stuff. So, and DC and Gogo music is a live performance genre. It's not a recording genre. So we've been trying to kind of navigate our way through this situation for the past 30, 40 years without any industry backing, kind of learning, our, learning, learning as we go. But we do, we have put out and we have created quality music, just like Genghis, you know, just like he said. I had somebody to put me with the program director, but he was also someone who was extremely tight with him too. Not saying I didn't have a quality song, but if I hadn't had that plug, would my song have been heard by the programming director? Probably not. And it's trash. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I mean, again, like I, I am one. I just know that every band out here that's, you know, that plays cover songs, they also have original songs. I know that the majority of bands out here do have original music. They may not have a, an, an all original CD like, like my CD, but I know that they have been putting forth the effort. But what, if, if what you're doing week in, week out, is putting food on the table and is, is paying your bills, then obviously that's something you're going to probably be more focused on. But I do agree that we do need to put forth more uh, uh, music. But I just want to be mindful of what, what, what G said. is the, like there's a wall that we hit even after we've spent thousands of dollars on, on, on producing music. Hey, hey, Michelle. We hit a hard wall. Yeah. Michelle, a brick Michelle, wall. We, you know who can break that wall? And this is what I want to say how People like this guy was so important, especially for us. When I was young, this was one of the main supporters that was a DJ at the radio station of Gogo. Like he was playing our records in those straight from the studio. Straight, yeah. You yeah, come from he the was studio. Our records in well, those he was prom, the only one, though. The only one. He was so, the only one. But so that, like, right. it's it's gonna be up to some of these DJs as well, that, like, to go around the program the record. I know that's what I did. I went so, straight to the DJs. Yeah. So I, I, that's that's so my bad. Like I, I totally agree because all of us are saying the same thing, the right thing. But I worked on both radio stations right. and like it hurt my feelings. That's why the last run I had on radio when the first shoot came, I quit. And y'all had that conversation with you, Joe. Mm -hmm. I quit I because I got tired. I'm like, listen, we busting our tail out here. We putting the music out and I talked to my, my program director and I sat in the office. We cool to this day. And I said, Nikki, I love you, but I'm gone. She's like, no, we can work. I said, nah, because we keep coming with the music. That's when we drop the hello. Mm. We drop hello. I say, so this is the type of music, this is what y'all really want. Mm -hmm. Y'all want a hot artist that's going to keep on making her hot. Mm. And we put it our way, and the whole city fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. We dropped and put it out for free. And I wish it was their song. It right? should have been their song. Well, like, if that was their song, would it have gotten that play? Exactly. As far as I'm concerned, it would have, but I don't. Get to pull, <laughs> I don't get to pull any strings. We have to do Q and A. Uh, so we're gonna first of all give our panel a round of applause <laughs> for those. This is this is Go Go 101. There are people who you just gave a very good lesson to. Just like if we were at the Grammys or anything else, people are here tonight. Just learn a great lesson about a musical genre. So questions, 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 questions. Yes, young lady. We knew you had a question. I, you know, hip hop, a rap, go go, bounce beats. 
What is that? So, so uh, bounce beat. Trey, you want to explain? You want me to explain it? Okay, so bounce beat is hip hop music started in New York, moved to the South. The South had a slower feel, a little more swing to it, and it started becoming the predominant music. Go go bounce beat kind of mirrors. It it, it kind of mirrors that. Do you do you have a bounce beat record you could you could? Sh- yeah, throw throw a bounce beat record on right quick. Can you can you and, and then give it a context between like a Chuck record and a. So you can understand the difference between the like junkyard. Yes. Ju- you know Junkyard Band, who was signed to Def Jam Records, was one of their first artists. The, the, the label that bought you LL Cool J and everybody else, one of their first artists was the Junkyard Band out of the Berry Farms housing projects. Yeah, we got to get that love. This is a bounce beat. See how you bounce it? See how you immediately start bouncing? Yeah, see how she bounces? See her bounce? This is a bounce beat. Can we, can we get it turned up a little bit in the sound, please? Right, it's got that bounce to it. And if you have to show live, oh my God. Now play a tri- what we're going to call a traditional go-go record with a, with a pocket. Syncopation. One second. Play, I play for play it. I show you. The other beat on top of the beat. That clock, 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 clock. That's the syncopation part. Clock, 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 clock. That's the syncopation. W O R. All right, that came out 1986. Yes, indeed. And that song is about food stamps. And Ra- the, na- the, the word say <laughs> Reagan spent all the food stamp money. That- Reagan made the bombs. <laughs> and made the bombs. Next question. Basically, I just want to know, like, do y'all have any plans, like, for any festivals or any kind of like a go-go weekend, uh, any of them things going on? Yeah, we actually, need? we got some stuff coming up. Um, I know on, on, on the side that we're doing it, we was trying to, like, merge the youngest more. You know what I mean? Like, because, like, they just out there now. You feel me? And they just lost. That's why I always say give them hugs, not slugs. Like, a lot of times you just got to give a kid a hug, and a hug will go a long way. So far as we putting together right now, like, you see the people that come in our city do the Broccoli Fest and all that that's really not from Washington, D.C. Nothing against that situation, but we're putting together a backyard festival. Uh-oh. Oh. And that's going to be where you get the arts. And the arts come out, the entrepreneurs, no matter what color you are, black, white, Asian, Ethiopian, Indian, you can bring your culture out, get the people to know our music and what we live for and just have some stuff out there, literature on go-go and where we come from and what we do as a, as a music and as a people in our city, being a true Washingtonian, baby. So we got a lot coming for you. We got a question over here, yes, young lady. Right. So it's really, I, I tend to share the sentiment that, that the music itself and the culture is being recognized on like the next level, and I'm very excited about that. But it's like, what are your thoughts on our people and how best to use the openings of the go-go and the museum to bring that music to the people that are in the So, in case you don't know, there is a go-go, uh, go-go museum will be opening. Uh, Ronald Moten is in the building. He's had the founder of the go-go yeah. museum. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in Southeast, in Anacostia. Um, yeah. And you can help 
because WPGC Radio has a a, a radio thon next Wednesday to yep. raise money for the Go Go. Twenty five thousand. Uh, we're trying to raise twenty five thousand dollars to get this Go Go Museum open. Any um, donors you, in the building tonight would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, please, please contribute. But you can go to WPGC slash Go Go. But speaking about policy, legislation, yeah, and what we do moving forward, what do you guys see real quickly? For this say, just, I say this to Governor's Michelle, she know because we talk all the time. It's like, especially with the museum, it's just the awareness. Things like this, the one-on-one, are things that we really need to like let people know that's not from here, to know what's really going on with our music and where we're trying to go with it. Because we fought late in the street, Wilson Building, fighting for laws, and we didn't did it, but nobody really paid attention. With this Mute DC thing and all that started, it just opened everybody's eyes because it's a lot of people that moved in our city with the gentrification. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, what's next? But we're moving and we're trying to do a lot of things, but they're kind of paying attention now. So we got our foot on the gas and we ain't going to, we stopping at no stop signs. And with, you know, uh, uh, we're moving. And with, and with, and with that being said, um, you, everybody who, everybody knows, if you haven't heard that DC is, um, is, 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 is officially or is about to be officially, I think they had one more vote um, to be um, DC's official music. Yes. And what people yeah. like Ronald Moat and Natalie Hopkinson and Don't Mute DC have been trying to do is to make sure that we as a culture um, make sure that this is not some rubber stamp, some sort of, you know, uh, token-like, you know, gesture that they're actually putting real uh, energy behind right. it in the, in, the, in, the, in the name of funding. <laughs> You know, to make sure that, that Go-Go, just like New Orleans, is represented by, uh, you know, a, a music when you go to Tennessee, when you go... The same thing. Yeah. They just, New Orleans went through the same thing where they were trying to challenge the second line and their regional sound because there are many cities that have these regional sounds. Like, you know, there's Jersey and Baltimore Club, there's the New Orleans Bounce, and they really tried to challenge their bounce music. So they're going through the same thing because the same type of gentrification is happening in all of these cities where they were predominantly black and strong populations. So it's our job. It's all of our jobs in this room. Yeah. To yes. Make sure that when you're voting, that when you're <laughs> paying attention to policies and legislations that this city is passing, that they're they're working to protect culture and the dollars. You know, showing up to the shows and showing up to this event is just one step towards like your education and your awareness if you didn't know, if you were one of the people who came into the city and you weren't aware of what this music meant to us and you just saw the Metro PCS store blaring music on the corner and thought it was a nuisance. No. This is this is our this is our shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and and, and, and let me be very clear. Like people that people even out of towners, black kids that come into DC to go to Howard University, the the the, the stories that we heard after that of how they how they learned once they got here. Kids from New York that really didn't get it and were like, yo, we knew where Howard was because when we got off the metro, you heard that metro PCS. Exactly. Bopping that backyard, bopping that junkyard. Oh, we knew we was close to school because we heard that and you knew which way to go. You know, so even if they, it didn't personally have a significance to them, they got it once they were in school because they saw what it meant to us. Uh, and a lot of people don't understand that part, you know, because you haven't been to a show. It is a live experience. And for us, it's embedded in us from the gate. Got to see You know, it. my mom was playing R.E. off rip. That's, I mean, I know all the songs. Right. So, so. <laughs> so, so we know it's a personal thing, but for us, for all of you, the responsibility comes in how you make your decisions and where you spend your dollars and making sure that you support us when you're doing that and being cognizant that this is something that matters to a community that is not well represented in the city anymore and how hard we are all working to make sure that it happens. And part of, because I'm also a DJ, that's really where my platform lies. And I'm in a lot of different spaces and how I really started was because I wasn't hearing enough of our music when I was out in clubs and there was a lot of DJs who were not from here running those atmospheres and it was well, getting but, on my nerves. But, but, and it was getting on my nerves. And no, hold true. on, because no, 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 no. that's, that's true. And I'm not no, talking no, no, about but you. I'm, I, know, I know, but I'm just saying, but I'm, I'm going to... But you, you, you I'm can, 20 years, 20, right. 20 some years so in. So I'm saying five years I ain't, no, ago. Listen, no, 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 but we got DC club owners that don't want go-go. Right. So but it that's until it's time for the club. You see what I'm saying? We can lose that club. Uh -oh. it's and they want to call us to come in and say what you're witnessing. Okay. What you're witnessing is a go-go argument. <laughs> it no, happens no, every no, Saturday. No, it happens it's every no. Saturday at local barbershops. Hey, look, just go to a so, barbershop, it'll be just like this. That's so real. It's like no matter what. Like even like I, I go around everywhere, all the cities I go in, I can go in. I'm Seattle. I just saw a movie called Taste to be out in this this summer. Right. And that that like they let me in. 
I don't have to worry about nothing. Any city I go, I, I got to go in. I'm not going to say a name of the club, but I come to the front of the club. Fact. One club, you just say it won't play the music. And they like, oh, you can't come in, G. Oh, pop. Yeah, okay. they don't, they don't All right, so no cool. go-go so, music in this club. So Let's keep cool. it real. So I'm like, okay, am I not dressed right? What's the problem? Like, and it, it always been a problem. But it's like, I'm a Washingtonian, though. I didn't migrate from nowhere from here. I'm here. Oh, this is where I'm that. from. And That's so, good. like, when we open these places like this for the Kennedy Center, like my man E. Where you at, E? So the OP Tribe original. So the, the uh, Go-Go Crusaders. With, with Raheem Devon. We played in the Kennedy Center last New Year's Eve. Right. I cried. Blew my mind. I cried right over here. Is it over here? Uh-huh. Behind over me. behind you. So we played there. And it was like we never had those doors open. Ever. Nope. So, so And I've been here all my life. So for this audience, I would like to say, just imagine that, that you could actually play at the Kennedy Center, but then can't get in, the, in a nightclub in your city. So imagine if, if Miles Davis were playing at Jazz at Lincoln Center and then walk down to a club and they say, Miles, you can't come in. That's crazy, right? But this man is, he's the, he, he is go-go. No, he boy. is it. So what I would like to say to piggyback on what Domo was saying is, please, when you hear these pieces of legislation coming up or policies or initiatives that include go-go music and culture, remember, you might actually help save a kid's life. These, these same uh, things that happen in the streets are still happening, so you might be able to save a kid's life. Got gotcha. you. You might be able to uh, influence uh, uh, what kids do with this music and, and, and move it and push it and make it the sound that everybody knows that represents from here. And you can only get it here. You can't get this anywhere else. This is unique to us. It's, it's quite, a, quite, a, quite a thing. It's like a rare, rare wine, if you will. <laughs> so, so please we invest. Over here. We have question. a question. I'd like to return to the historical topics we've been discussing. Uh, one of the threads that runs through DC musical culture going back to the 60s is the Globe poster, which yeah. became a very important, very important promotional tool. The posters we're seeing here tonight generally came yes, from Globe. Sir. I wonder if you, the, the more senior or experienced uh, members of the <coughs> panel would speak about the days when Globe poster was how you got the word to the people. Well, for me, um, so, so you know, you would see shows come into town and you would see like all of the soul groups and all of the funk groups, George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic and Cameo and all of those groups. Well, then Go-Go uh, bands decided, well, why don't we make our posters look just like their posters? So there's no, uh, you can't tell the difference. Well, it became such a thing for us when I would see a Go-Go poster in the car, I would, there's a, they're coming to the black hole, they're coming. We actually started snatching the posters off yep. of the poles. My bedroom, when I was a senior in high school, my bedroom was nothing but these big, my mother called them ugly ass posters. <laughs> because you know they were very uh, uh, vibrant and you, you could tell by the fonts that are used and the lettering and the way that things are put. There's no, uh, they didn't, my mother didn't think there was any artistic merit to a Globe poster. However, there are places throughout the city now that are dotted with Globe posters. If you go to right. Baby, 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 Baby well, Wale, yeah. or is it, ba is it Baby, <laughs> Baby Wale well. or where? Baby Well. Baby Well, nice we gonna call it Wale. On Ninth Street. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very prestigious uh, restaurant on Ninth Street. Ninth Street. Ninth Street. And the entire uh, facade is Globe posters blown up. To a, and, and shown in a different light. So you're sitting here eating foie gras and, and a nice pinot. And here's the Globe posters that I got vilified for. I think it's the exact same thing as, you know, hip hop at one point in time was the worst music ever. Snoop Dogg was up and they were like, he's the worst thing ever. He had to go to Congress. And now Snoop Dogg has a television show with Martha Stewart. Yeah. Understand that these things transform with time and you can be part of that transformation. The Globe posters was based out of Baltimore, too. But you know, to, to, to what you said, you know, you, we can't put those up anymore. Nope. They, you get fined for putting those posters $500 up. $500 fine. Uh-oh. I've funny. hung a couple of Globes in my time. Oh, we have, too. <laughs> and I got, <laughs> and, 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 like, today, like, we used to do our own grassroots marketing, my band. 
and we would go over the city on our own with our own teams and put our stuff everywhere. Then out of a, out of, one day out of the blue, I think it was for our album that had Sexy Lady on it, we got an email and it was very, very clear <laughs> that that needs to ha not happen ever again. <laughs> same, same, same. I used to have a band with my brother called The Catholics. And then later on, I was... Uh, oh, they used to crank. <laughs> oh, I had the class. I wouldn't have seen the Catholics at I the was, Black Hole. I was a, uh, a co-founder of WMD, and we made sure to have a Globe poster for our first show. Well, maybe you can help us get some more of that Globe poster love in the city. Unfortunately, Globe shut down. Well, we can, we'll, we can refinance. <laughs> I'm in real estate. <laughs> so we're, at this point in time, we're going to let DJ Alizé get on these ones and twos and sort of show you guys yeah. and let you guys experience what it is that we love so much and hold so dear. Oh, God. When I reminisce over you, sometimes I cry, but I smile too. Yeah. I'm making this promise to you right Please, now. I'm living my life to the in honor of your memory. So when you look back on me, you see that book of the song. This is my 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 song. This Gone, but I gotta keep holding on. We need some drinks. Memories of you keep me strong. Yeah. We need a couple Remember drinks at this point. Come on. Now, boy, I know somebody has something in their bag. Right. I know somebody has a flask. Pour your flask out. This is an Anita Baker record, but you see, it, 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 and this is a go go standard. Sing the song if you know it. Get this, get this. Oh, he, did, he didn't sing. I'm sorry. It was the intro to the pop. And this is that pocket we keep referencing. Don't get the man in the back, selling all the good old tape recorders. I'm some good old junk y'all takes in the back that you want to buy. Woo! We're about to go back and get one. Hit it up! Gotta love it. Woo! Hit it again. Hit it, ball man. Oh, I love it. I love it. This one, this one was, oh, this one was on soundtrack. We had this one on tape. They know that that's right. This was a dancehall hit.
All right. This is Trey. This is Trey and his band. Now y'all might recognize the system in the background. The original record is system. But this is Trey's band. Sing the song, man. Now this was G. 
Jill Scott's Go-Go record on her the first album. She's from Philadelphia. If you know her, sing it. Tony Braxton of, what is she on, 
Broadway. Yeah, but she's from, yeah, she's from here. Unfortunately, it's time for us to wrap. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming and experiencing something real in D.C. Yep. The next one, we will be back here with GoGo 101 on February the 28th. We thank you so very, very much. Once again, give it up for all of our panelists. I hope you learned something tonight. Please continue to support GoGo and GoGo culture. Put music back in the schools. Put music back in the schools. Please put music back in the schools. And listen to the Joe Claire Morning Show on WPGC 95.5. Six to 10 every morning. 10 for gin, 9 for wine, 8 for grapes, 5 for your time. Yeah, we'll be coming right back. Thank you.